homelessness continues to be a major issue in Philadelphia, notably on Kensington Avenue. In the city, approximately 5,700 people are considered homeless, with approximately 950 of them being unsheltered. to other parts of Philadelphia, this side of town has the highest concentration of homeless people. Homelessness is caused by a variety of factors, including poverty, inability to afford a place to live, and falling outside of the system, all of which makes meeting housing requirements more difficult. Sometimes mental illness plays a role. Many new people have become homeless as a result of the opioid crisis. Although the homeless population is spread throughout Philadelphia, including Center City, and across the country, Kensington Avenue has the highest number of homelessness. or suffering from a mental illness is not a crime. It is also not illegal to sit, occupy, or sleep in public places. Law enforcement officials do not arrest homeless people because doing so reduces their chances of finding housing and raises the public sector's cost. Law enforcement officers are always looking for ways to help those in need of a place to live while also protecting the rights of residents, businesses, and visitors. The COVID pandemic has also exacerbated Philadelphia's homeless population. In addition to dealing with a massive increase in the number of homeless people in Philadelphia, there has been an increase in drug consumption. More notably for Kensington Avenue, the reason you see many people sleeping while standing, drowsing, and bending over is due to the drug xylazine. 
Dalenzine is a sedative with analgesic and muscle relaxant properties that are used in veterinary medicine. It is used to calm and facilitate the handling of a variety of animal species, including cattle, sheep, and horses, as well as to perform diagnostic and surgical procedures, relieve pain, and act as a local anesthetic. In Philadelphia, Zalazine began to gain popularity in the mid-2010s. People who used and sold drugs allege that xylazine had become a highly sought after substance and that it has become a much more common component of the local drug supply. The reports from Philadelphia as well as hints that xylazine was appearing in other parts of the country prompted the researchers and colleagues to try to track the drug spread across the continental United States. Xylazine was found in 0.36% of overdose death in 2015, according to research. It increased to 6.7% by 2020. It was found in one out of every five overdose deaths in some areas. Notably, the study discovered fentanyl, a powerful synthetic opioid that has come to dominate regional drug supplies in nearly every xylazine related death indicating that it wasn't just a tranquilizer that was causing these overdoses. Experts are still trying to understand the risk of xylazine, but they are concerned that the drug, which is not an opioid but acts as a sedative, may increase the chances of fatal overdose when combined with opioids like fentanyl because it can exacerbate the respiratory depression caused by opioids. It may also make reversing overdoses with naloxone, which is designed to work on opioids, more difficult. of control and it's
It is extremely difficult to explain addiction. It can be difficult, especially as a concerned loved one, to explain to yourself and others how your child, partner, or sibling became addicted to drugs. Many people on the outside believe that substance abuse is a bad choice in which someone should have said no, bad habit that just needs to be kicked, weakness that someone can't overcome the withdrawal symptoms, and moral failing that the person has given up. In reality, drug addiction is none of the above. It is a chronic brain disease that cannot be cured with a simple no or change of mind. It is critical to recognize this before asking, why do people become addicted to drugs? Or why did my child become addicted to drugs? More than likely, you may have additional questions such as, how did this happen? Your loved ones may have been properly raised with a strong moral foundation, or in a good home, but they can still begin using drugs. The truth is that people use drugs for a variety of reasons, and they become addicted for a variety of reasons. It is critical that for the individual not to blame themselves or the loved one before you have thoroughly investigated the situation. As concerned family members, we frequently wonder why do some people become addicted to drugs while others not? This is a valid question, and many drug users don't believe they'll become addicted. The truth is that anyone can become addicted to drugs, and there are a variety of factors that make them more vulnerable. The following are some of the most common risk factors or potential causes of drug addiction. Early life stressors such as being abused or witnessing trauma. 2. Abuse either physical or sexual in the past. 3. Genetic vulnerability such as other family members who struggle with addiction. 4. Prenatal alcohol or drug exposure while in the womb. 5. Lack of parental supervision or monitoring during adolescence, peer pressure from friends or social circles, or association with drug-using peers. Mental health disorders such as depression and anxiety. A person's susceptibility to addiction can be influenced by a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Genetics, according to National Institute on Drug Abuse, accounts for roughly half of a person's likelihood 
of developing an addiction. As a result, environmental risk factors such as stress, trauma, abuse, a lack of education, low income neighborhoods, and high school parties play an important role. Adolescents who use drugs are more likely to develop a drug addiction behavior because their brain is still developing. Exposing the brain to drugs during this critical period can result in long-term brain changes and an increased risk of dependency later in life. According to research, nearly 70% of adolescents who tried an illicit drug before the age of 13 develop a clinical addiction within the next 7 years. Those between the ages of 18 and 25 are also at high risk as their brains mature. In fact, 9 out of 10 people who struggle with substance abuse began using before the age of 18. Science has contributed to a better understanding of how drug abuse affects people and how addiction develops over time. Researchers have been able to see how substance addiction work in the brain using imaging and other cutting edge technology. It all starts with a long period of drug use. When a person uses drug on a regular basis, it alters the way the brain functions. Drug use becomes compulsive over time rather than recreational or voluntary. It is no longer a choice for them to use drugs, it is beyond their control. When a person uses drugs, the brain produces dopamine, a pleasure chemical. This causes a euphoric bodily response and mental state in the user making him or her feel good or high. When the brain is exposed to this on a regular basis, it becomes reliant on the feel-good behavior. As a result, it hardwires those euphoric drug-using experiences into its circuitry, and drug use becomes its top priority. These are physical changes that will occur. The brain's reward system, a primitive system that exists to ensure we seek what we need, becomes hardwired to prioritize drug use over all other activities.
such as eating, sleeping, family, and academics. Even when the drugs no longer provide pleasure to the user, which happens over time as the user becomes tolerant to them, the brain continues to push this need. It causes intense craving in the same part of the brain as the survival instinct. As a result, acting on these cravings, i.e. using drugs, becomes an overwhelming and desperate need. The brain believes it requires the drugs to function and survive. At the same time that the brain's reward system is affected, the parts of the brain responsible for judgment, decision making, learning, and self-control are also affected. Because a person loses the ability to make rational decisions and control impulses as a result of these physical changes, quitting drugs becomes even more difficult. Despite the fact that drug addiction causes physical and chronic changes in the brain, there is good news. The brain can be rewired back to normal. Substance abuse is, in fact, very treatable and manageable. Of course, it is not an overnight solution. It takes time for the brain to rewire back to a healthier state, just as it took time for the person's brain to rewire in favor of drug use. Addiction recovery necessitates changes in routines and thought processes. It entails substituting healthy behaviors such as exercise and cooking for drug use. It also entails reframing a person's perspective and definition of drug use.
it is no longer a matter of survival, but of destruction. To get to the bottom of their drug use behaviors, education combined with cognitive therapy is required. By considering the outcomes and alternatives, the brain can be taught to crave healthier behaviors and to dismiss drug cravings over time. It is possible to teach it to seek and prioritize meaningful relationships and activities over drugs and alcohol. Abstinence, ongoing therapy, active management, cognitive reframing, and professional support can all be used to teach this. As the homelessness crisis worsened, there has been numerous attempts to regulate in Kensington encampments. Many have urged Mayor Kenny's administration to address the neighborhood's deplorable living conditions. <laughs> 